Hey class, so for part two of our ZBrush user interface video, we're going to go over a few more things on the interface and um, file types and all of that good stuff. And then we're gonna show you how to create your very first 3D mesh from scratch, starting in two and a half D mode and moving to 3D mode. I'll show you a shortcut using a project file from the Lightbox later but it's a good idea to start with this method, understand how it works so that you can um, have it in your back pocket for later. Um, for exercise 1.1, first I want you to open ZBrush and just draw around. And here you will see ZBrush 2.5 in action, so two and a half D. This is kind of like ZBrush's draw mode and you can tell that it's in draw mode with this orange button. Um, if I change my alpha, you can see that it's drawing and just doing some very exciting shapes. But this is nothing that we can work with in 3D. So we're going to clear our canvas by going to Layer and Clear. There's also a shortcut, Control and N. And then um, we're going to go over here to all of our different poly mesh options. I'm gonna pick Sphere 3D. Now again, if you just draw multiple times, you can create like a pretty draw picture. But what we want to do is actually be able to manipulate this tools or this 3D model. So if we hit edit right now, this is one of the big mistakes that you can do. By hitting edit, it allows you to edit the last created object, which looks like it was this one. So we don't want that. Again, what we wanna do, let's turn off edit mode. So we're currently in 3D when we're in edit mode. Would you like to switch to two and a half D? Yes, switch. Um, we're going to go to layer, clear, or press control and N. Um, so this is what we want to do. We are going to click in the middle with Sphere 3D. And I'm gonna click and drag straight up and then hit the Shift key. Now what this does is snap my sphere to straight up and down. If I clear my canvas one more time and select a cube, you can see this a little better. If I click and draw straight up, and then hit shift, it will snap my cube to an up and down axis. That's what you want. You don't wanna be starting off on a, um, on a slant or anything like that. So select Sphere 3D, click, drag straight up and press shift. Now, before you do anything else, hit this edit button to move you into 3D mode. And then the next thing we're gonna do is make this a poly mesh 3D. So now it's a poly mesh 3D and it's loaded into our subtool menu. And we can now um, draw on it with our Z brush. Okay, so the next thing is how do we navigate around Z brush? So navigation is a lot like with Maya. You will be tumbling panning and zooming left and right. And then there's also an option to snap to a 90 degree angle. So to rotate, you're just gonna click in an empty space and kind of move your cursor left and right. To pan, you're gonna hold down the Alt or the Option key and then click and drag with your mouse. And either click works. And then zoom is probably the most complicated. So you're gonna have to hold down Alt while clicking then you let, while you're still clicking, you let go of the Alt key and move your cursor up and down and it zooms in and out. So let me give you an idea of how that looks. So I'm going to just click in empty space. So if I press the letter S, I can change my draw size. So you can see in this cursor, the middle ring on your draw size is the main focus of your um, brush. And then the outside ring is the fall off area. And you can change that here. You can also change your focal shift like that fall off here. 
Now to move around your scene, you're just gonna click in empty space and drag around. Sometimes this will get frustrating because if you're kind of just, it's fine. Um, if you are just brushing and you happen to start brushing off of your model, um, then it'll rotate your model by accident, which is kind of annoying. Um, if you're ever rotating and you're not sure where in space you are, there's this new little head here. Um, the blue button allows you to go to the front view and if you hit it again, you get the back view, left view, right view, top, bottom, and then front again. If you're rotating around your object and you want to snap to a 90 degree angle, you'll just press shift. If you want to pan or move your model back and forth, you're gonna have Alt pressed and move left and right. And then the last one is zoom and that is the trickiest where you're pressing Alt, pressing down on your canvas and then let go of Alt and move your cursor up and down. These icons on the right of your document window enable you to um, pan or scroll the document so it kind of moves it left and right. Um, you can zoom your entire document, so that's the entire square around or canvas, zooms in and out. Or you can reset the size by pressing zero or actual. Um, here you can turn on perspective or not. I kind of recommend just leaving it off in general. Um, here we have grids, so our floor. And you can see these tiny little X, Y, and Zs represent each of the different grids. I feel like the grid is more was more useful when we didn't have this little figure here, but now that we know where we are in space, it's not so important. You can use local symmetry to turn on symmetry for an object that's not directly over the origin or the central axis. You can lock your camera from moving left and right using this button. That can be useful, especially if you find yourself always kind of clicking off of the model. Um, and you can lock different axes as well. But I figure if you're going to lock, you might as well lock them all. These next icons refer to the size of the mesh within the document versus the icons at the top actually referred to like the document size itself in the window. Fit mesh to view or F fits the mesh completely in the document window. You can click and drag to move your mesh within the document window. This is different than the scroll which moves or the zoom which changes this entire document size. You can also click and drag in this icon to rotate your model. And then this will turn on our polyfill, which we'll talk quite a bit about later. And this allows us to solo if you're in, um, if you have multiple polygroups, which is nice, or multiple objects. Um, transparency and ghost, we will worry about these when we do hair. Okay, let's talk a little bit about file types. So within ZBrush is a Z project which carries absolutely everything within it. So your document and canvas size settings that we just changed. It includes all of your individual Z tools in the project file, and it can save undo history, which can make your files absolutely huge, like five or six gigabytes. This creates a Z project, um, which is fantastic um, in that you can open it up, it looks exactly like you opened last time um, with all those settings saved. However, these files can get up to five gigabytes in size and it's kind of unnecessary to have a Z project for everything. So what we do instead is save as a Z tool and this saves just the actual meshes, including all of its layers, which are subtools. So when you're turning in your assignments to me, please save your Z tool rather than turning in a Z project because my computer just can't handle it memory wise. Within Z tools are individual subtools, and I like to think of these as layers with meshes on them. Um, and 
The layers work similar to Photoshop. You can merge them, you can split them. Um, you can also append objects as a new layer. You can duplicate layers and you can um, use different methods of organizing your layers like um, folders and things. And you can also rename your layers so you can keep track of what everything looks like. The final kind of type that I wanna point out isn't a file type, but what it is is a polygroup or a selection group within a subtool. And what's really great about polygroups is that they enable you to work on just a part of your mesh. And there's a way to solo just that part. You can also create polygroups from masks. And um, there's buttons that will enable you to mask by polygroups so you can just work on one group at a time. So in practical terms, what does this all look like? Here's a project that I created um, last spring when we were doing this class. Um, this is a project file. It ha is about six gigabytes in size and it contains a bunch of sub tool or a bunch of tools or Z tools from our class. So this was my um, demo project. This was a classmate, Emily Queen. Woo. We'll use that navigation to scale and Jenna's. Um, so what you can see here is within a single Z tool, there's folders in the subtools and a tremendous amount of meshes and detail um, that lie within that one Z tool. So when you're creating your files, save as a Z tool. And then if I need to put them all of our separate files together into a project, I can later. So Z tool number one. In terms of polygroups, you can see in Queen's model here that these rock, they're like rocket hair pieces um, are divided into three polygroups. So each side, there's symmetry here. Each side has um, different pieces and you can press control shift click to solo different pieces. Uh, control shift click to bring them all back. There we go. So polygroups can be a good way of working with one particular piece. And we'll get into those when we get into the blocking exercise. Let's get into our very first exercise 1.1 and it'll show you some basic brush commands just using control, alt, and shift. So feel free to take a screenshot of these, but for your brush commands, shift means smooth, Alt means the opposite direction. Um, control masks an object and then control click and drag outside of an object removes the mask. B activates the brushes. You can narrow your choice down by the letter and then you can press S and you can adjust your size of the brush and you can also press spacebar and it will bring up a menu of lots of brush options. Okay, so pretending that we just reopened ZBrush, I'm gonna press comma to get rid of the light box. I'm gonna go over here, select a sphere 3D, or I could select this one. Click and drag straight up, hit shift. Before I do anything else, hit edit, make poly mesh 3D. Now we can see our subtool. I'm just gonna rename it sphere one i am actually going to duplicate it because i want to use it again and one more time duplicate okay so i'm going to turn off visibility on these other ones and just work on this one so for brushes the only two brushes i want you to use today are the standard brush which you can select by going to b s and t is standard the other brush is move. So if you hit B or you click on this brush palette, if you type M, that narrows it down to all the M brushes and you'll select move. So now let's draw our attention to draw size. So if you're using the move brush, you probably want to use a very large brush size and you can adjust it here for the standard brush, BST. I'm going to use a much smaller draw size like 
30 is good. Focal shift controls the fall off of your brushes. So let me just make this bigger. So I want you to play around with that too. Okay, so I'm also going to activate symmetry. You can see right now my cursor will only go to one side or the other. If I press X, now you can see there's a little red dot on either side of this X axis. Um, with the standard brush, I just want you to draw some curves all around your shape. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I just want you to get used to rotating around your model and then just drawing on a round shape. Okay, so you can see when I go over the same spot multiple times, it intensifies the, um, the displacement in the Z direction. If I want to pull in, just hold down the Alt key and drag next to where you pulled out. So this will give it like a nice um, alternating pattern. Oops, it's not my best work there. So if you wanna go back at all, you can use this timeline right here. This little menu right here, we'll just click and drag. So I'm gonna go back to where out there okay and so alt again and so wherever I created a a rise I'm gonna create an indent next to it and just go all the way around and I can fast forward this but it's kind of nice and relaxing and um, it's just good practice so I want you to do at least one ball that's Kind of like this. If you mess up in places, you can press shift to smooth. Or even if you don't mess up in places, if you just want to have a nice smooth area, you can smooth. And I'm just going to drag this out again. And then dig in again. So not particularly exciting, a little wonky, but I want you to take an, a screenshot. So command shift four on a Mac and um, submit it as exercise 1.1 and then I also have a mask and a moving exercise for you in 1.2 and 1.3.